Hey guys, my name is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning all about random number generators within the Swift language. Now, before we jump straight into this, if you enjoy this tutorial and want to further your knowledge and learning ability, why not enroll in one of the many courses we have available on iOS development? All links for these will be down below in the description. But let's jump straight in to the tutorial. Random number generators are amazing when it comes to application development. What it allows us to do is to create some form of function which randomly generates us a number within our project. Whether we want to use that number to go on to display or just use it as a function, as a value that kind of controls something else within our application, the great thing about it is it's random. It's not predictable. It's always going to give your user a different outcome every time they either interact with this function or simply use it. And it keeps your application alive and spices things up. So great examples of random number applications or generators is stuff like a lottery application. So when you're trying to kind of get a number, you can generate it uh, between two values and get that number. So what we're going to do in this lecture then is we're just going to create a simple button and a simple label. Now, every time you press the button, it's going to randomly generate a number and display that number as a value inside of our label. The labels are going to be the output so we can see what number we're getting from our random function. And it's really, really simple to create as well. With the new Swift 4.2, it's kind of revamped the whole random generator system. So we'll get into that in just a moment. We're going to first jump straight in to our main dot storyboard. Now in here, what we're going to do is straight away go to our objects and we're going to simply drag and drop in first a button, which will space that out. And there we go. And I'll rename it random number. There we go. And then we're going to add in a label. So every time we press the button, it will randomly generate that number inside of our label. So if I could go to the attributes inspector and I'm going to centralize the label so we can clearly see it when we build and run. And all it's left to do is create an action for the button and an outlet for the label. So we'll bring up our assistant editor, making sure, if I just space that correctly there, making sure, give it a little side panel too, uh, our assistant editor is just playing our view controller.swift. And we'll first space out our outlet section. So start with our label, control click or right click and drag and drop that over. And I'll simply call it our label and connect that up. Do the same for the button, control click or right click and drag and drop it over. Now this time to the bottom underneath the view did load. Make sure the connection is as an action and I'll call it random number. There we go and connect that up. Perfect. So now we've got the two connections all set up. We're ready to add in all the code for us to start randomly generating the value within the application. So let's go back to our standard editor and we'll jump straight into our view controller.swift. Now, briefly, I just kind of mentioned in Swift 4.2, they kind of revamped the whole random function um, abilities that we have to create within Swift. I want to say mainly revamped. You can still do the older version of it. They kind of added a new version. Now, the new version is so much more simplified. It's beyond belief. If you're very uh, familiar with randomly generating content, uh, in the past, in previous versions of Swift, we either used the uh, kind of um, arc for random or uh, arc random kind of uh, functionality. So if you're familiar with that, you're going to see how much easier it is right now. And if this is the first time you've ever randomly generated content, again, I feel so happy for you because you've came at a time where random content is so much more simplified. So what we do is we space out our button here and the function that gets triggered when we interact with our button. And what we want to do is create a constant let, uh, give it a name and equal that to the random value that we're going to be generating. So what we could say is, and we can create our let here, and we're going to call it our random number and then equal that to our random kind of generator format. Now, granted, we could have this already pre-linked to the label, but this is just to show you how you can store it in a kind of variable and then distribute it further on in our application. So what we do is we equal it, this variable now, this let, this constant, to our capital I for our int. There we go. Now this int, we then do the dot random function. And from the int, we have four types of random functions. 
Now, the one that we want to use is simply, we just go for the in range int value there. So when you press enter, it goes our int dot random function. And then in, we have the ability to add in a range. So we can choose a range of values that we can randomly generate between. So it could be either zero to 10, it could be 50 to 100, it could be zero to a million. Whatever the range may be, this is where you add it in. So let's say for example, we want to randomly generate numbers between, let's say one and 10. So in the range, you place in the value of one, and then you do three dots to enter in our range, and then the, then the end value. So we then place in 10. So we're saying we want numbers between one all the way up to 10, and it includes one and 10 to be randomly generated. So when we press our button, our let function there random number will then equal that random number between one and 10. Then it's up to us to display that value inside of our label. Now, again, we could have called this on earlier and I'll kind of explain what I mean by that a little bit later. But what we do is we now grab our label that we created and we do dot text and select the text attribute of it. And we equal that now to our random number, well, the value that we have inside of it. Now, our random number is currently in an int format and the label can only display uh, kind of information or values inside of it in a string format. So we need to convert that int into a string. So we type in our string and we do our two brackets there. And inside of the uh, two brackets, we format our random number int inside of it as a string to display within our label. Now, granted, this whole functionality here technically could have been placed inside of this string anyway. Well, this is to show you how you can make the kind of function equal a variable and then go on to distribute that variable throughout the application. But pretty much, there we go. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So what we've done there then, we've created a let and it now equals a random number with a random function between one and 10. Once it equals that, it then displays that value now stored inside of our constant inside of a string to our labels text. So let's go to build and run and let's test this out. I'm pretty excited for this to uh, kind of see how it, you know, how it exactly works and how it displays correctly on the screen. We'll just put the simulator to the side there so we can clearly see and go through each of uh, the lines of code uh, in more detail as we progress through it. So we just wait for it to now build and run. And once it does, what we then do is press our button and it displays the number seven. So again, what it does, it creates this let, this constant here, a random number, and equals it between a number of one to 10. Then we're telling it to display in the labels text whatever is inside of our random number in a string format, because that's how the label reads it. And obviously whatever's inside of it is a number displayed inside. So every time I press it, we're gonna get a random number. So we got one and 10 there, quite weirdly, <laughs> just after one another, to show that it does equal the two numbers there and everything in between as well. Pretty cool, right? So you will get some that do often repeat themselves just because there's only, you know, basically 10 numbers to randomly generate between. But let's say we wanted numbers between, for example, 100 and 1000, which seems a bit dramatic, but it shows you how you can single out two numbers and randomly generate numbers in between them. That's pretty much what it does. So then if we press random number now, we're going to get a random number between 100 and 1000. And it's less likely these are going to repeat themselves just because there's like 900 numbers now to simply choose from. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And that's how we can keep our applications fresh and up to date with random content within the application. It's so much more simplified. It only took two lines of code and you can break it down to just one if you included that random function pretty much inside of the format string. That's so you know, pretty much work as well. Uh, but it's as simple as that to randomly generate content directly within our application.